Well, thank you, Jay. And, and uh, you speak my heart on a lot of the things you've covered this morning, this afternoon. And um, I'm Mike Keenan. I'm with Gallagher. We're an uh, insurance brokerage, uh, one of the largest brokerages in the world. Um, I happen to be focused very much in agriculture. I work primarily with cattle feeders, dairy producers, hog producers, and uh, lots of other ag-related entities, primarily throughout the Midwest. Um, one of my roles is to work with our agriculture producers to help them avoid uh, catastrophic losses. And certainly one of the most critical is of those losses is due to fire. This is not the scene that you wanna see when you're coming to work in the bright, clear, crisp morning. Um, unfortunately, we see these happen all too often. This is a hog farm, obviously, that's um, sustaining a pretty extensive fire. And the aftermath of those are just, they're so devastating. Uh, the loss of the livestock, the loss of the structure, the, um, the effect on the employees that work there is, is absolutely tremendous. So as we might imagine, uh, the people that work in these farms, as you know, are, are very committed to raising um, healthy um, animals. They're, you know, work every day to keep them fed, watered, clean, healthy. And, uh, and while we all know what the end result is going to be, um, they're there to keep them in, in good, healthy condition. And when a fire happens, uh, oftentimes they'll put themselves at tremendous risk to, um, to protect the animals, to protect the structure, protect the business. So when we look at what the, uh, the cost of a fire in a facility like this might be, you know, obviously there's the property loss and that's a huge piece of it. Certainly, um, you know, when we lose a large structure and as we know, livestock uh, structures are, are getting larger and larger. I remember when I started in this business, a large hog farm, might be a 2,500 head to a 5,000 head sow farm, and, and now we're at 15,000, 20,000 head. So um, they keep getting bigger and bigger. And with that, the loss gets greater as well. Um, it's great, great for productivity, but if there's a loss, they can be very extensive. One of the bigger costs tends to be business interruption. And when you think about it, it's not like a warehouse burning down. You know, a warehouse burns down, you build it back up and you can restock it right away. Um, even a factory, you can get it up and running fairly quick. But with livestock, you have to wait for that whole reproductive cycle. And in many cases, what we might see, for instance, in a large dairy or in a swine operation, we could have 18 months um, you know, of, of downtime. By the time we get the debris cleared away, rebuild the structure, restock it, and then wait for that reproductive cycle to move all the way back to full production easily can be 18 months, up to two years. We also have the lost opportunity costs. When there's a, a devastating loss, such as, as the one you see here in the, in the photo, um, this takes a lot of time and energy. And it's the time and the energy that you're now we are not being able to devote to the primary focus of our business. And we're having to get through that recovery. And, and even insurance, insurance is great and it, and it covers a lot of things, but it doesn't necessarily cover all the time and, and um, energy that is put into all the things that are needed to build back that farm. And so that lost opportunity cost is certainly a big one. And of course we have the loss of the livestock and, and that can't be overstated. And my number one concern always is the potential loss of human life. And I've been through farms where we've had close calls, very close calls, and also farms where we've lost human lives. And um, it, it, everything else pales in comparison when that, when that happens. So, you know, when we look at the facilities that are designed and built to raise livestock, whether it's poultry, swine, dairy, what have you, there, you know, there, our focus is so much on production. What makes a farm efficient and productive? How do we get it to do the things that it's designed to do the most efficiently? 
And oftentimes fire safety or uh, egress is back burner. We don't think about it. Um, you know, I get calls sometimes, hey, we're, we're building this building and where do we need to put the fire exits? How many do we need? And oftentimes the, the engineers are, and designers are focusing on what's the most important thing. Why are we building this facility? And we don't think about some of these other issues. And so uh, we need to be thinking about that on the outset of building a new building. Um, we want to make sure that we are avoiding the effects whenever possible of, of um, the fire on the, the employees and the animals that work in the buildings. So just a quick refresher on the fire triangle, because I think this is, while it's, it's pretty elementary, it's also key in prevention of fires. We have the fire triangle. First of all, we've got to have enough oxygen to sustain combustion. We've got to have enough heat to raise the material to a, a temperature will, when it will ignite. And we've got to have enough fuel for combustion to keep it going. When we think about the livestock structures that we most commonly see, a lot of them are wood frame. A lot of them have plastics and other uh, materials that will burn. Um, we also have a lot of oxygen. Obviously, we've got to maintain a, a healthy environment for the animals. So we've got a huge amount of ventilation that is going on 24 seven. And if a fire starts, that's gonna help provide the oxygen necessary. It's also gonna help spread it. And so we have to think about that as well. And so we have all the combinations of these three things. So controlling the, um, the outside of a fire is the most critical piece. And in, in my work, the piece that we really, really focus on is the separation of risk. How do we separate the risk so that it is not in the animal living space, not in the space where a uh, fire will grow rapidly, but to keep it contained into ancillary rooms um, that are supporting areas of the farm, not production areas. We have three types of classifiers that, that would affect our livestock facilities. Class A, I always think about these as ash, things that create ash, wood, paper, cloth, grain dust, feed dust, um, all those sorts of things that will create an ash. Class B, these are the things that are flammable liquids. They, they will boil, they'll give off uh, a gas that will become combustible. So our, our fuels, hydraulic fluids, things like that. And then our class C, which are our circuits. You can think about those as circuits. Obviously our farms depend tremendously on large amounts of electrical. Um, this is one of the areas where in our experience, our loss experience over the almost 20 years that I've been doing this, the uh, probably one of the biggest areas of, of uh, hazards that we have is in the electrical systems. So it's imperative that our electrical systems be maintained very, very well. Uh, they're kept clean and dry and whenever possible, separated. Typically, any of these fires will result in a, in a structural fire, and they are the most dangerous fires. They spread very, very rapidly, um, especially with the ventilation we have, the construction materials. And when we think about, um, as I mentioned, the size of the structure just keeps getting big, bigger and bigger. So it's really imperative that we are controlling where our, our hazards are, and uh, preventing that initial fire from spreading throughout the rest of the facility. As we know, there's not really a, a huge um, amount of building codes that are affecting uh, livestock buildings. I will mention, and, and we'll talk a little bit more at the end, there are now some fire safety codes related to livestock facilities and the NFPA uh, standards, and we'll talk about those toward the end here. We are seeing some alternative uh, construction methods. Um, there's been a tremendous amount of interest in this recently. Um, Tilt-up uh, concrete is certainly one of them. We've seen a few hog farms built of uh, tilt-up concrete panels, kind of like what we see with big box stores. So, you know, the outer walls are tilt-up concrete and then it has a metal roof to it. 
um, certainly has decreased, you know, it, it decreased that exposure tremendously. Um, steel frame, steel insulated panels. I think we're going to see a lot more of this coming soon. Um, insurance is really starting to take notice. Big thing at this point, it's new enough here in the States that we don't have a lot of the loss data. Europe, it's used extensively and um, their data there is very good on fire prevention. Um, they are more expensive to build. Um, we are hoping that we're going to see a, an extended life uh, span of these buildings and also the reduced risk should help us out quite a bit. One of the areas that I think we need to uh, be looking uh, more deeply at is spray insulation. We see these typically in um, uh, some dairies and some other buildings, um, something that we don't have a lot of data on yet, but we are seeing some potential that there may be, uh, that the foam uh, may be capturing methane. Um, we can use intumescent coatings or combustible layers, non-combustible layers to help protect that. But it's something that I do think um, needs, to have, <clears throat> needs to have some more research done. I will tell you that after the large dairy fire in Texas, this has been kind of a, a focus point and I don't think there's enough data yet to know really what's going on with that. Electrical, as I mentioned, is tends to be an issue. Um, we need to have electricity in our farms. This is an example of thermal imaging just with extension cords and heat lamps. And you can see uh, in each of the image, the brighter spot is the high temperature. And the scale on the right, you can see the, the outlet on the picture on the left there. 321 degrees, and the other one uh, just with that looped up cord is 235 degrees. And so we can generate a lot of heat with these, and so controlling this hazard uh, is something we need to pay a lot of attention to. We do thermal imaging for many of our clients, and this is a great preventive maintenance tool. Um, and you can see here in this image, we have a spot within this electrical panel that's overheating. It's 416 degrees. You know, at the very least, we're going to have a loss of equipment of whatever that's connected to. Um, but in the worst case, that could start a fire. We recommend to our clients that you have separate electrical rooms uh, that are non-combustible. They're kept clean and dry. Uh, heat and he humidity and dust are um, are. Uh, great threats to electrical systems. And so keeping them clean and dry can extend the life and it can also reduce the potential for a fire in, uh, in an agriculture building. We wanna make sure that uh, flammable gases are stored properly uh, within cabinets, things like that, and that our fuels that are used at the farms are appropriately stored. In the picture down on the bottom, you can see uh, there was a fire on this barn and the fuel tank in the uh, right hand corner, um, you can see the, the uh, paint has burned off of it. The uh, tumbleweeds have burned up that are next to it. Um, very fortunate that tank didn't explode. Mobile equipment, I just wanted to mention this in passing in that mobile equipment, in some cases we've had mobile equipment that's caught fire typically in the wintertime when they're plugged into block heaters. And if the tractor or equipment is parked right next to a farm building, um, it's gonna spread very quickly. And so uh, containing that, having block heaters on a separate circuit and parking the equipment away from the farm is very important. Feedstock and storage tends to be, uh, as we know, extremely flammable. It needs to be kept at a good distance away from um, our farm buildings, kept away from livestock facilities. Need to check it regularly and make sure it's properly stored. The other piece about that is making sure that we're using appropriate risk control methods in, in regards to hot work and smoking. Uh, the equipment is well maintained so that we don't end up with overheated bearings or sparks emitting from that, that equipment. I'm gonna talk just briefly about, and just about out of time here, I wanna make sure though that we cover fire suppression. Um, 
think about the, the distance our farms are away from, uh, you know, our, our uh, fire departments, the distance they're going to have to cover, what water supply is available. It's a great idea to identify uh, alternative water sources since we don't have things like uh, fire hydrants typically at a farm. Um, making sure we're using good con uh, fire containment and um, making arrangements to make sure that uh, the buildings are accessible uh, to fire trucks and things like that too. This is just a quick overview of fire extinguishers. Our most common ones that would be used in a farm setting would be a multi-purpose. Um, this is a general purpose ABC fire extinguisher and uh, otherwise an electrical, uh, dry chemical electrical for electrical rooms. We always recommend to our clients that they do a very good hazard assessment of their work areas um, and be specific about it. Don't, don't do it as part of a normal work day, but be very intentional about looking for those fire hazards. Where do they exist? What can be done to reduce or eliminate the hazard? If the hazard cannot be removed, then what, what methods can we use to uh, reduce the hazard? Thinking about the what ifs, that will help us determine the how to's. The last topic I wanna cover here is fire exits. It's crucial that we maintain good fire exits in all of our livestock facilities. And I know with biosecurity and things like that, it can oftentimes be very difficult. Um, this farm is an example where two human lives were lost because there were people at the farm at the time that the, um, there was initial explosion uh, due to methane gas and the roof collapsed in less than six minutes. We've got to make sure that there are good fire exits available. Um, it's crucial that there is at least two exits as far apart as possible. That is a code, uh, both in OSHA and the National Fire Protection Codes. They need to be clear and accessible at all times, and they can't require any special tools, knowledge, or, or uh, anything like that. We, you got to think, how do I get out? You don't even need to think about it when you're leaving. You turn the knob or, or push the handle, and out you go. They should always lead to the outside, not into another building or another area that's not accessible. And they should be labeled as an exit, so it's clearly understood what they are. Last two resources here, there's the National Fire Protection Association, the Fuel Gas Code, and the Fire and Life Safety for Animal Housing Facilities. These are both accessible at the uh, nfpa.org and uh, just type in the code number and they'll come up and you can easily view those. I thank you for your time today.